Shay Patrick Cormack, a man betrayed by all those he loved, a man changed to the very core. A man was as much a traitor as he is a savior. Despite him being a Templar and perhaps one of the most brutal ones, this character is loved by many Assassin's Creed fans. They look at him with reverence, admiration, and hope. Despite what you may think about Shay, he is a shining example of doing the right thing, no matter the cost. A man true to his own creed. History may brand me traitor, rebel, or renegade, but in the end. It doesn't matter how history remembers me. What matters is that I followed my own creed. Those are not just some lines he uttered, they are the representation of his core beliefs, his own true faith. The very reason he exists and that is to protect the innocence and uphold justice. Assassin's Creed Rogue holds a special place in the series, a concept that shook the very foundation of what it meant to be an assassin. And despite the poor execution and ignorance the creators showed towards Rogue, what they could not ruin, however, was the amazing idea that the Templars too could be right. And what that provided the fans of Assassin's Creed with was introspection, and it really blurred the lines between assassins and and Templars and our own understanding of good and evil in the Assassin's Creed universe. It showed that no matter what side you're on, they're all only human. And what we understand fundamentally about human beings is that we cannot be right all the time. If you sit down, close your eyes for a moment and think about all the concepts Assassin's Creed Rogue provided commentary about, it will stun you as to how deep and impactful the game was. It told us everything, how people are flawed, how evil is sometimes necessary, what it means to deliver justice at the cost of all you hold dear, and the story of one man with unshakable resolve, Shea Patrick Carmack. Born in the year 1731 to Irish immigrants, Shea lost his mother during his birth. His father was mostly out of the picture since he operated in the Merchant Marine and Shea grew up with his aunt. From his very childhood, Shea formed a close bond with Liam O'Brien and the two were thick as thieves. After a few years in his early to mid-teens, Shea joined his father at the sea. This is where he got the earliest taste and idea of being on a ship and where he learned almost all the basics about being a sailor. Shea was a brave and strong man to begin with. While in the oceans, he also trained in marksmanship and swordsmanship and became a truly formidable fighter. So much so, that during a pirate attack in 1747, he killed the captain of the enemy ship but unfortunately lost his father. Broken by the law, Shea returned to New York and wandered the streets without a plan or hope. Then Liam O'Brien came to Shea's rescue once again and took him under his wing and got him to meet Achilles Davenport, the then mentor of the Assassin Brotherhood of America. And not long after that, Shea was a full-time assassin. But despite operating for four years, the man never felt fully immersed into the ideologies of the assassins. The thing I love about Rogue so much is how it portrayed the members of the Assassins and Templars. Some people in the Assassin Order 2 were brutal, needlessly violent and morally corrupt, like Chevalier. And at the same time, they were members of the Templar Order who had honor, were just, and had the will to sacrifice everything to protect innocence. Almost all Assassin's Creed games that came before, with the exception of Assassin's Creed 3, portrayed the Assassins and Templars in black and white. Like literally, all the Assassins were good, honest and noble. And all the Templars were conniving, scheming, immoral assholes that just wanted good control. But you know, it always felt like a fantasy story. It's just good versus evil. But for once, Ro gave us an in-depth look into the Templars and told us how what's right. It's just a matter of perspective. And our preconceived notions and portrayal of the Templars in previous games were too one-sided. Take George Munro, for example, a most honorable man who not only saved the life of Shea, who was supposed to be his enemy, but also treated him as an equal without doubts and suspicion about his true intentions. And he was a Templar. Mr. Munro really sounds like a man everyone would want as the friend and confidant talk about two sides of a story. 1755, there came a day when everything changed. From within the assassins, a monster would emerge who would destroy the entirety of the Assassin Brotherhood of America. After learning of the precursor temple through the Voynich manuscript he acquired after killing the Templar James Wardrop, Shea makes his way to Lisbon, Portugal, to the Camo convent where upon discovering and disturbing an ancient artifact from its place, Shea triggers a massive earthquake. And despite escaping with his life, Shea is a broken man because he cannot live with the fact that his actions caused the death of thousands of innocents 
Athens, something he always dreaded. And the man does what anybody would have done. He blames Achilles and rightfully so. Because despite a similar instance occurring in Port au Prince Haiti, Achilles still sends Shay to carry on with the mission and the same mission has now scarred him for life. And although Achilles denies having any knowledge about the effects that stealing the artifact would have, Shay is convinced that the assassins are not what they claim to be. He tries to steal the manuscript and escape Davenport Homestead, but is unfortunately caught in the action and is chased by all the assassins in the place and shot while on a cliff by one of the assassins. But Shay doesn't die, he survives, which marked the beginning of the end for the assassins. But think about this, he was betrayed by his brothers in every conceivable way. Not only did they force him to take actions that killed thousands, but they also chased him like a dog and tried to kill him. You know, after an event like that, which man wouldn't change? And change he did for the worse. Barely escaping with his life and being saved by Colonel George Munro, Shea took an oath that he would end the menace of the assassins no matter what it took. Not just that, he found a new path, the path of the Templars. And if you look at it objectively, it really seems noble. If nothing else, they understood that trying to retrieve the artifacts caused loss of life on an unimaginable scale and were trying to do everything to stop the assassins from causing that. But his transformation was completed from a non believer to a full blooded Templar once his savior George Munro was killed, which Shea believed was at the hands of Liam. And once he believed this, Shea set out for revenge, for vengeance, for the lies, the deception, and most of all for the assassins not listening. He hunted down every single one of his former assassin brothers and sisters and murdered them in cold blood. Kesegowase, Adewale, Hope Jensen, Chevalier, and his most heartbreaking kill, his best friend Liam O'Brien, which must have felt like severing his own arm. And the terrifying and inappreciable thing is, Shea went through it. Not for the Templars, not for vengeance, but for what he believed in. Shay's story is one of pain, sorrow and redemption. People often don't understand how multidimensional and amazing this story was. They often see the marred execution and come to conclusions that this game is the worst in the Assassin's Creed franchise. But if you think about it, this might just be the best. And I'm not talking about the final product. I'm talking from a pure conceptual standpoint. It really showed us how everyone was doing what they believed was right. And they were all ready to sacrifice everything they loved in order to walk the path they had set themselves on. You no know, games like this are just not made anymore. If you look at the game, games coming out in recent years, there is no definitive story. There are thousands of choices and hundreds of endings. It's like there's no set story. We're just making our own. But during this era on Assassin's Creed, the stories were the heart and soul of the games. You know, Ubisoft was coming up with concepts that were just so extraordinary. No matter what you think about the game that we got in the end, you cannot deny that the plot is one of the best. I'd like to mention some things. First off, I'd like to talk about theme song of Rogue because it represents a lot of underlying emotions. If you're a fan of the series, you would know that it's a different version of the Ezio's family soundtrack from Assassin's Creed 2. And while that represented everything Ezio held close and dear like his family and his home in Florence, the theme of Rogue portrays doubt and all that Shay was told by the assassins. And when a different version of the British Empire from Black Flag plays, it really gives a feel of Shay's subsequent freedom from his past and the carving of his own path. Well, that's the way I look at it. And his robes too, my goodness, one of the best in the entire series. They are representative of so many themes. He has the Templar cross right in his chest. Although he doesn't wear a hood and robe once he becomes a Templar, which I strongly feel he should have, and I feel if the hood was on, it would be a statement to the assassins that says, I was one of you once, but now I'm coming to end you. Talk about terrifying. And now for his character arc's aftermath. After he killed Arno Dorian's father Charles Dorian in Versailles, he moved to far Europe and lived a full life, but he never forgot his past or his friends. He named his first son as Liam Monroe Cormac, and a march to his best friend Liam O'Brien and his mentor and confidant Colonel George Monroe. Role. He also became the Templar Grandmaster later in his life and would always be a nightmare for all the assassins across the world. A man who rose from the ashes, walked the path he believed in and lived his life his way. A true assassin gone rogue and a true Templar nightmare. And with that we reach the end of the video guys. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of Assassin's Creed Rogue and Shea Patrick Carmack in particular. You know, over the years I've noticed he has a huge fan base and on the flip side of that people absolutely hate him. Tell me if you're Team Shea or Team Nay. And if you like the video and my thoughts about Shea Patrick, smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel. It's easy, it's free, so support a brother from the creed. But that's it for today guys. Stay safe, stay strong and stay tuned. It's your boy VZX signing out.